So I'm up here at the garden and you can see, uh, I think that's Runt. I don't think that's Jezebel. Who are you? <laughs> Hi, baby. Hey, sweetie. Hey, baby. How are you, girl? Hey, girl. Today I'm going to blow off a little smoke. I'm going to talk about uh, my beef with carbon monoxide sensors on generators. And I want you guys to chime in, drop a comment down below, share this, like this, whatever you want to do. But this really kind of irks me. This is what happens when politicians get involved with an industry that don't know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> and it gives a false sense of security. And I think they're actually doing more harm than good than, than by requiring carbon monoxide sensors on these generators. I'm gonna talk about it. I'll bring up some points. You express your opinion, I'll express mine. And hell, maybe this will go to Congress and we'll tell them, stay the hell out of it or do it, fix it the right way. Here we go. All right, so the girls are back here behind me. So while the girls are out there behind me, let's talk about this generator issue and why it bothers me so much. Number one, I want you to understand something. People don't die because they're sleeping next to a generator. Got it? They die because the generator exhaust or the generator is positioned in an incorrect place where the carbon monoxide gas works into a house slowly over hours and hours and fills up a bedroom or something where you're sleeping and that's how people die. I'm not making light of this situation. In fact, I think it's really important because there were some horrid stories of like um, a dad going to work and starting up the generator and coming home and finding his family dead. Horrid, I understand. But putting a carbon monoxide sensor on a unit that maybe is outside under a covered sun porch with plenty of breeze outside during a storm is not going to go off when in fact the carbon monoxide is actually working into the house where they're sleeping. So it doesn't solve the problem. As a matter of fact, it creates, I think it creates more of a hazard than anything because now if you have your generator running outside and you get a little bit of a carbon monoxide buildup around it, the switch goes off and now you got to go outside in the rain and the thunder and the lightning, trees falling and uh, try and start up your restart your generator. Matter of fact, that's how a lot of people die is working with the generator, starting the generator, having a tree fall on them in a storm. So you just once you start your generator, you want to leave it. You don't want to mess with it. There have actually become there's actually starting to be a lot of videos online now about how to override the CO sensor, the carbon monoxide sensor, on these units. People are showing you how to wire it so you can override it, just for this particular reason. In a second, I'll talk to you about my generator set up over here and I ordered a unit without a carbon monoxide sensor on it. So the proper way to run a, a generator obviously is outside, far away from your home, whether it's 10, 20 feet, whatever you wanna say. You wanna make sure that there aren't any eaves up above the generator that the gas can actually work into. You wanna make sure that there aren't open windows and open doors. So a lot of times a death will happen, someone will put a generator under like a patio roof or something and then they have the doors open because it's hot outside and then the carbon monoxide works in. I'm also gonna tell you about, in a second here, I'm gonna tell you about carbon monoxide sensors and where to place them. That's really important. So I think we can probably think about this and we can all agree that people are not killed because the carbon monoxide is building up around the actual generator most of the time. They're being killed because improper generator placement is making that carbon monoxide go somewhere inside the house and building up over time. So it's a false sense of security to say, oh, I don't have to worry about my kids. I don't have to worry about my family because I have a carbon monoxide sensor on my generator. It's not the way it works, people. If they wanted to fix the problem, they should mandate that all generators come with a battery power 10 year, which I'll put a link to in the description below, a 10 year carbon monoxide sensor and tell you where to place it. Again, I personally will not buy a generator that has a carbon monoxide sensor on it. And unfortunately, Congress apparently has gotten involved. They're putting pressure on the, uh, on the industry. And I think it's a horrible idea. Again, it's a false sense of security and it's not addressing the issue, which is improper use and improper placement and understanding carbon monoxide. Now, carbon monoxide has a specific density of 0.97. I think it is. Air is one. So it's actually lighter than air. So it can actually travel with the air. So if you have a heating system, it can actually rise with it. And otherwise it can fall. It's it's lighter than air. So it's a little bit confusing about the placement of carbon, carbon monoxide sensors as well too. 
again, carbon monoxide will kill you because you're breathing it in. So where you need to place your carbon monoxide sensors is at your mouth and nose level. So if you have rooms that you're not sleeping in, you want to put them at about five feet, five, six feet, somewhere around there. That's where your carbon monoxide sensor should be. If you're in a bedroom, you should put it at your mattress level. So if you're lying down, you want that carbon monoxide sensor at your head level in the bedroom. Got it? Does that make sense? Because if it, carbon monoxide is going to kill you, it's because you're breathing it in, and that's where they should be placed. Next, you should have one in every bedroom, placed at a level, and you should also have at least one or two on each one of the levels. Now, what's funny is, I was reading, and I went on, did extensive searches about the placement of these things, and there's all kinds of information on it. Some people say put it up high because carbon monoxide travels with the heat. Some say put it down at the baseboard, but in general, the Firefighters Association basically say <laughs> the same thing. You want to put it where you're breathing and put it at roughly at about five feet is where you want to put these, the majority of them. Personally, if you're in a bedroom, I'd drop it down a little bit since you're lying down, but you should have one in every bedroom and you should have one in every room or every level of the house. They even say, the Firefighter, Firefighters Association say, do not put a carbon monoxide sensor near the source. So they say, don't put it near a furnace, don't put it near a gas stove, don't put it near something that's actually producing the carbon monoxide because you're gonna get false readings. And what are you gonna do? You're gonna take that, shut that thing off or rip it off the wall because it keeps going off. Well, the same thing with a carbon monoxide sensor on a generator. I have a little generator shed. It's a ways from my house, but it's on the side of my house where there is no vent on the outside of my house. The carbon monoxide cannot work in, number one. Number two, the exhaust points away from my house. I open up the doors and it has a hood that protects it from the rain. But also I still have a carbon monoxide sensor in the one area that it could possibly, which is a bedroom. We still have a carbon monoxide sensor in there just in case. It's that, it's that double security. But again, I don't know many people that are taking a gas generator and bringing it into their living room and running it inside their living room. I don't know of any death that's ever happened that way because you could not sleep. Um, it, most of the time people are putting it in a garage with the door open, but the gas isn't going out. It's actually going into the house. They have it under a, a sunroof, um, on a porch and they're running it and it goes inside because they have the doors open because it, they can't run their heating and cooling system and it goes in that way. That's how it happens. But all the deaths are because the carbon monoxide goes into the house and finds where you're sleeping and where you're living. So. That's my point, that's my beef. I just think it's a poor, very, very poor way to address an issue that needs to be addressed. Ooh, okay, so we got a lot of videos coming out. I'm gonna show you my generator shed in a minute, but if you follow my channel, we did a goose grass, a crab grass treatment, then a goose grass treatment. This new lawn we put out here got burned back, started to turn brown, guess what? She's back up and beautiful now. So this is gonna be a real nice Bermuda area. Now, the next huge project that we're having done is we're having this corner cleared out. So we couldn't see the pond down here because there were trees all along the house and this was a nasty thick area. Look at it now. <laughs> so this, is, this was where our view stopped and this was a massive thick wooded area in here. It was full of, you know, spiders and snakes, and there were trees here. One of them fell and just missed the fence, and these things were going to come down on the house. So I said, Guy is the guy's name. <laughs> guy did my pond berm, and he does land clearing. Now, he does massive, massive projects. And uh, I'm lucky to get them over here in between one of those big projects because they're not cutting trees. They're actually pushing these trees over. I'll show you on video with an excavator taking the roots out and everything. And what we're doing, if we can ever get some dry weather, is they're coming in here now and doing final cleanup. And we're gonna shape this land in here, make it nice and smooth. I'm gonna come in here on a plant like micro clover and some grass. And man, the deer are already gonna be piling in here. And I'm thinking about, I would love to put a little mini log cabin over here as like a studio slash guest house. But dude, I can't find anyone to do it at a reasonable price. If you know someone, have them contact me. I don't want it for free, I just, maybe a little discount. But what I'm thinking about doing is like my shed over here, they make a tall barn shed that I can get like a 12 by 20 with a loft and a front porch, all real nice. It'd be real cool sitting over there because I've got power and water right here. 
sit it over there, sort of facing the pond over here. It'd be really cute. Have a little studio over there, plus a guest house or emergency house or whatever. You know, if this house burned down, we got a place to live for a while. So uh, that's really cool. So let me show you my generator shed and I'll talk about the, why I got this generator. So this is kind of temporary. We didn't, we didn't set this on any kind of concrete. We just built up a gravel pad because we're probably gonna end up moving this if we get some solar out here. We probably put actual solar batteries here because it's shaded all the time. But this plastic shed, I'll put a link to it. It's not cheap, it's like 400 bucks. But the beautiful thing about it is, is it has these uh, hydraulic hinges for the top and then the side doors open and it's all plastic. So what I do is I open this up. There's no venting on this side of the house whatsoever. The only soffit is about 30 feet up high. So I open this up, I take cinder blocks, I lock open the doors. You wanna make sure the doors are open. And then <clears throat> I just drop that down to protect it from rain. Now you can see where a carbon monoxide sensor is gonna go off on this thing because there may be a little bit of carbon monoxide buildup around this. I guarantee you it's gonna shut off and that's the problem people are having right now. So let's talk about this one. My old one was a 4,700 starting watts and it was a dual fuel. I have learned dual fuel sounds good, but I never use it. I've never used it. I always have plenty of gas around. I keep two tanks in here. I got four tanks at the barn. I got plenty of gas over here. And you know, my typical power outage is 12 hours at a time typically, even though we've lost power three times in the past three weeks here. This one is a single fuel and I'm finding that you can still get the non carbon monoxide sensors in the single fuel, but when you go to the tri-fuel or dual fuel, it's a little bit harder to find them. In the description below, I'm gonna to link to this unit and maybe try and find you guys a, a tri-fuel or dual fuel. This one is 8,700 starting watts, 7,000 running watts, and it'll power everything in my house except for my HVAC. Now, I did a video a few weeks ago talking about the really good window air conditioner units that we put in our bedrooms. Why do we do that? For this exact reason. Temporarily during the summertime, we get a power outage, we kick those on. We're sleeping at 67 degrees and everyone else is 95 and sweating their butts off. Our bedrooms are freezing cold because they're running on an inverter. Now, I have carbon monoxide sensors inside the house, inside the bedrooms, just in case. That's the whole purpose of this. It's a backup. You wanna have, you do not, I'm not sleeping out here around my generator. I'm not gonna die because there's carbon monoxide around my generator. I'm gonna die because the fumes work into my house. Got it? So your carbon monoxide sensors need to be in your house, not by the generator. This is an inverter. Now, what's the difference? I'm gonna over, over, over simplify this. Regular generators put off dirty energy, okay? It can have an impact on some things like computers and TVs and so forth. It's like distortion. Inverter generators run very, very clean. They have like less than a 3% distortion on it. It's very clean energy. That's why so many people use them. So inverters are definitely the way to go. Again, this thing will power everything. Previously on my old one, I had to run around the house and shut down as much as I could, but it still powered two small window units plus my fridge. This thing will run everything, including my well pump, and that's the issue. The issue I was having was my well pump. I couldn't have water because my well pump is a 220 and I had to be able to power it with everything else. Let me show you the face of it. <clears throat> so one thing I didn't understand and didn't realize is a benefit until I actually started running it on my old unit, my control panel was here and my exhaust was back here. So what I had to do was I had to flip it around, start it and then turn the exhaust around. On this thing, I can leave it just like this and then I can go have the exhaust points out. I just take my whole house. Oh, where are you? I take my whole house plug, I plug it into here, and then that plugs behind here. Air conditioning unit's running, excuse right me. Here, you'll see I have a whole house plug that goes in here. And then inside, I throw my main switch. I disconnect from the power company. Once I do that, I can slide over my, um, my generator switch, start my generator, click it over, and the whole house lights up. That's it, I'm done, I'm done for the evening. We have everything, refrigerator, water, TV, internet, everything is fine. Everyone else around us was out for, you know, two days with no power and we're having a great time. Our bedroom is 67 degrees. We have internet, we have TV, everything is fine. Now I wanna pop in here because I did forget a couple of notes on this generator. 
Uh, it comes fully assembled, ready to go, except when you turn it over, there are two brackets you need to take off. They're shipping brackets that sort of suspend it. They're orange brackets. You need to take those brackets off. Next, you need to put the wheels on. You just slide the bolt in, put a cotter pin on. You need to put the handle on. This is heavy. This is going to come via freight company. They drop it off right at your door. Um, as soon as you get the wheels on there, I drug it all the way around on this gravel by myself with the wheels on it and it didn't have any problem. It's like, I forget the weight, it's like 100, 100 and something pounds. But it's not light, I mean, it's a big generator. But man, this thing will kick butt and it'll run everything in my house. And the other thing is it does not come with oil. So when you, if you order one of these, you need to get a, a 10W30 or SA30, 10W30, small engine, just regular John Deere oil or something. It takes 1.2 quarts and it does come with a funnel. It comes with a funnel, a little loopy funnel to actually fill it up. 1.2 quarts, so it's, it, you have to buy two quarts of oil. Um, other than that, I mean, it's pretty cool, dude. It's a great little unit. We've had Champion products now, I mean, for years. I've had three of these generators. This is my third generator, and I've had probably seven of their semi-trash water pumps. They work so great. that's about enough for uh, the generator video, but like I said, I got a bunch of videos coming out. This is a dry pour that we're doing on the shed because I pulled a UTV up in here and a lot of times it kicks gravel. So we're doing a dry pour of concrete. I have actually a wood frame and I have rebar welded in there. So I'll put that on video too. Anyways, talk to you later, Dot.